Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglies Guitar Show. It's Thursday, so that means this week is done for the Gibson Demo Shop. Let's go ahead and talk about the coolest of the offerings. Okay, so let's start with the Thursday offerings. They had some really stellar pieces right here. I was tempted to buy them, but at the end of the day, I decided I'll leave them for someone else. They were cool, but not necessarily review and demo worthy. So let's start off with this striking blue Les Paul Custom. So kind of similar to the gold sparkle silver burst that we reviewed a couple of days ago. They've taken a regular Les Paul Custom and refinished the top and changed the plastics a bit. So we no longer have any type of pickup covers on here. So they're just the black exposed coils. That looks really good with this really dark blue refin that they did on the top here. And you're going to notice... You see these knobs? I believe they borrowed those from the Les Paul Modern series, or they're at least something very similar, but it appears maybe nickel hardware on this one that's been slightly aged. It's either that or it's super aged chrome, but it is a Nashville style bridge, so likely just a regular Les Paul Custom. But the back on this one is also black, but black and blue, that works. Especially because you've got the black plastics right here, so that matches the back as well as the headstock. This is a very symmetrical guitar. If only they would have put like a dark blue stinger back here, then I would have added this to my cart and purchased it. As believe it or not, this thing actually sat on the shop for at least a couple of minutes. Because I was here right as it was uploaded and I'm like, that thing's going to be gone soon. But it actually ended up lasting for a lot longer than usual. But then again, the demo shop this week was not very consistent as far as their usual upload times. But there's a little bit of a finished blemish on this one right here. Eh, not really that big of a deal. But yet the same scuff marks on the edge of the neck. What is going on? Because my Silver Burst had that too. Is the Plex machine accidentally damaging these guitars? Or is it a rogue employee that's just scratching them all up? I don't know. But it was kind of cool. I'm sure in person this would actually look pretty good. It would probably change from like a light blue color like you're seeing right here into that dark blue. So whoever got this guitar, very cool. Send me some photos of it. But it was $4,999 and it is currently sold. But I'm curious what pickups they put in it. Whoa, Seymour Duncan 59s. I mean, they're good pickups, right? But in a custom shop? Ah, well, okay. I thought they would use their own brand of pickups. Interesting. Next up, this thing was so tempting, I just wish it would have been on a custom shop one. Now, in my reviews and demos, I think I've made it clear, I love the way that these Vibrolas look, the Maestros, but I don't like the way they function, and I would not personally own a guitar that has one, except for the aesthetic beauty of it. I mean, if you get them set up properly and lubricated and all that, sure, they work for a nice light warble effect, but I've never found one that I've been in love with. But this finish is something spectacular. You remember the old Gibson flip-flops? Or more recently, the PRS Silver Sky guitars, you know, Lunar Ice and Nebula, how they have that flip-flop finish that changes in the different light? This is one that they did on an SG. So this is just an original collection SG. Here you can see, brand new, they're $1,999, with this style of trim on it anyways, otherwise it's 200 bucks cheaper. But they've given it this really cool green to like brown finish. Like you can kind of see it here, but this photo really shows you that chameleon tone. So it's almost like a purple into brownish gray, but then an emerald jade green. I mean, look at it right here, it almost completely disappears. Maybe there's a little bit of yellow in here. This was such a cool one. I just wish it would have been on a custom shop custom because not only was it the top, they also did the back, the neck, the sides, if you can say an SG has sides, <laughs> but it was really cool. And how much of a premium did they want? About 900 bucks. All things considered, it was fair because I'm sure a refinish in something like this from Gibson would cost you at least $2,000. So getting it from Gibson directly for $28.99, if you happen to have fallen in love with this finish, yeah, that was fair. Now, as far as looking to buy and resell, you're really on that line where it's pretty much top value. I mean, at the end of the day, this is a USA SG standard, and it's already being priced at about $1,000 premium, but a great deal for an end user. Let's see, is it available? No, it's sold. <laughs> Hopefully they bring that back on a custom shop guitar because I would like to review and document one of those. 
And who knows, maybe this was them just experimenting on a flip-flop paint. Again, look at the John Mayer signatures. Those things are crazy in value. People kind of lost their mind. Now, the Lunar Ice wasn't as limited edition, but it does show you pair with a very popular artist, give it a really cool flip-flop finish, and then you can charge a whole bunch of money for it. But you have to make sure it's super limited edition. Don't make too many of them. So hopefully we see something like that come out of Gibson, but the specs appear relatively unchanged other than that. Next up for cool offerings was this ES330L. And at the time of recording, it is still available. So it basically has a Bigsby on it, ABR1 bridge with nylon saddles, that's cool. Super long guard, like if you like vintage looking guitars, this is gonna make you excited. If you don't, you're probably confused why the pick guard is so big and why you've got all this other stuff going on. But a 330, if I'm remembering correctly, is basically a 335, but without the center block, so it's fully hollow. But this actually appears to be a custom shop level instrument, it looks, from the old Memphis plant, because that's not your normal serial number style. It looks like they might have had some issues on the nut, you had some finished chip. All that is, a lot of people will see these lines and they'll get scared that they're cracks. Now granted, lots of times they are cracks that run down here or like that. Sometimes it's in the finish, other times it'll like run along here, just right along the fretboard. Those are usually okay. In this situation, it just looks like the outline of the nut caused some chipping right there. I would not worry about that at all. But kind of a cool guitar if you're looking for an ES330. The price doesn't seem that crazy either. As far as other ones, there's a really cool Les Paul piece. I guess we should check it just to see in case they did something crazy on it. Normally, they leave these things alone. I remember when you could buy these things pretty easily between $1,200 and $1,600. But nowadays, you know, truly all original examples except for the mini tune, which nobody really liked on these. It's getting harder because people would buy these because they were cheaper than a, I think a traditional at the time and they had fancier finishes and a cool fancy hemp case. These are nice, especially when you open them up, you get the uh, tie-dye interior. But what people did was they would take all the piece attributes off of it, like the tail piece and the fancy studs, the fancy knobs, and they just put the regular stuff on it because these were specced out really well, but it was a limited run in 2014. Nowadays, pretty much the worst cosmetic thing, depending on how you feel about the situation, is the 120th anniversary inlay, as well as the black nut. It just kind of looks weird. Gibson doesn't use it very often. I'm not even sure why they used it on this model. I mean, at the end of the day, it was peace. The headstock doesn't look very peace-like. <laughs> I think it would have been cooler if they would have used like a pinkish hue like they do on the toggle switch cap on the nut, then it would have looked peaceful. But anyways, looks like it had a small ding on the headstock and a minor finish blemish on the horn. Personally, I'd advise staying at 2000 or under, but then again, availability, I see these things becoming collectible in the future. They weren't appreciated at first, but they kind of are now. But as far as left-handed guys, you had a 1499 Explorer. At the time of recording, it's still here. I think that's what a good 500 bucks off or something close to that. And the wood grain on this one looks pretty nice. But that headstock <laughs> looks a little bit goofy, but sometimes right-handed guitars will get these like uh, check out the Gibson M3 series. I think the only thing I don't like about modern day explorers is their headstock's really pointy. Like I think it needs to be rounded a little bit more. And here was a different custom shop custom. I'm surprised they don't just refinish all of them because they can get so much more. Now, you also have to factor in the cost of having somebody repaint it. Let's say materials and labor maybe cost some, probably what, four, four to five hundred. That might even be overshooting it. But if they can charge at least a thousand dollar premium, it seems to be worth it. But at the same time, they have to be careful of how many exclusive paint jobs they do because if you just start flooding the market with them, people will stop, you know, refreshing the page, waiting for the shop to restock and buying them all, you know, pretty much sight unseen just because they want to make sure they get an exclusive finish. So Gibson definitely has to tread lightly on that because so far they have a perfect blend. They haven't repeated themselves at all, but I guess that could potentially change in the future. But so far they're appealing to the collector market very well by not just doing like 10 of everything. <laughs> 
People love to collect limited editions. Okay, so we can also take a look at Tuesday's offerings. Honestly, Tuesday was not that exciting unless you were just looking for a regular guitar at an okay price. But there were three notable pieces. So first off, a 50s Les Paul Standard that was modified, but 2000 bucks that's $500 off. Now they've swapped all the plastics and everything to black, and they've capped off your tailpiece here and swapped it over to a trapeze. Not everybody's gonna like that, but doesn't this finish look way darker than normal? Are we sure this was, you know, just a normal gold top? Are they experimenting with more of a dark copper colored one? I'm not sure, but sometimes just swapping the plastics up will make your entire guitar look that different. So I guess unless somebody swaps it back to cream, we will never know for sure. But on top of the front, take a look at that back. It's strange, but I like it. Because it looks clearly like a two-piece back, but yet it's not a straight line. So is it actually multiple pieces? <laughs> I think what happened is they just joined it together. But this particular piece of wood had like a weird streak going on. So it makes it look strange like that. But great wood grain back here, kind of what you normally see. But this is not what you normally see on these 50s, 60s standards. So it's kind of like a, a two-faced back. And then as far as the neck, yeah, it looks nice. It's got some wood grain, nothing too crazy. But this one for $2,000, i am surprised it lasted as long as it did because despite a few cosmetic blemishes, it looks pretty cool. And if you don't like this tailpiece, you can always take it off and convert it back. Next up, this thing. I'm surprised it sold as fast as it did. I had a couple of messages from people saying, Gibson has lost their mind again. Just like the 100th anniversary Flying V. They want how much for a BFG? Okay, you guys have to remember, there were different runs of BFGs. This was a highly limited edition one where, yes, Les Paul himself signed the headstock instead of doing the Les Paul model silkscreen. And this was just a few years before his death. So they've kind of become collectible in that sense. But they have unique serial numbers as compared to the other ones. But I believe they're the same as pretty much all the rest of them that came. But original run BFGs are just so cool. I mean, where else can you get a P90 in the neck and a bridge humbucker with no pickup ring? <laughs> like you can find this combination sometimes, but no pickup ring. I mean, BFG stands for barely finished guitar. Apparently, this is what most tops look like before they finish sanding them. It's kind of like a faux flame effect in a way. I always thought they were nice guitars. I always loved these wooden knobs. And apparently, they have a whole stockpile of them because I'm starting to see them get put on other guitars. So even though these technically rank below a studio, they're a lot of fun. You can check out my old BFG Gator Green review and demo. I love that color. But yes, to pay nearly $3,000 for a BFG, it better be one of these limited editions. But I really am surprised it sold so fast because there are a bunch of other ones on the market. Like about a year or two ago, Gibson started to sell these off to dealers at discounts because they had a stockpile in the back. Apparently there's more of them, so you might see additional ones in the demo shop if you want it. But here's one in a really cool gold color, and it's even less expensive than the Gibson demo shop one at 2500 bucks, Which I still feel is high for a BFG, but once again, collectible nature makes it worth it. And the last one to cover for this week is another special tribute. Maybe somebody at Gibson's watching my videos, or they just weren't impressed at how slow the other ones were selling, but these special tributes, they used to be listing these at $1,599, but they brought them down $200, and I think paying $400 for a body refinish from the original manufacturer makes more sense. I can see why somebody purchased this one. But generally, you can buy this off the shelf even cheaper than a thousand bucks because this is one of those small runs that was initially meant for overseas that has the toggle switch down here instead of up here. So it looks like they're just refinishing those to help them sell out because most people prefer it in the regular location. And I get it, it's just traditional. But this one they called Fire Mist Green. And in this photo, it looks like a slightly metallic green finish. Let's just say if this was original retail price, a thousand bucks, I would have picked it up because that does look pretty cool. I don't think the photos did this one justice. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoyed the Gibson Demo Shop recap. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will catch you tomorrow on the next episode.
Take care.